give it a like <laughs> or subscribe or follow. If you can, share it with other people because we're going to cover a lot of questions, important ones. So, um, and you know, food questions too. So throw those at me as well. You can throw the food questions. Um, got health con health questions as well and, and all that. So any kind of insight I can and bring, I want to do that. So waiting for the comments to come up. And as soon as they arrive, I can start answering some questions. Number one New York Times bestselling author, Anthony William, The Medical Medium, if you're new here. And I even have Cleanse to Heal with me right now, by the way. I hope you got this book. You can go to the library, get it for free. It's an amazing resource. Hey, hi, hi, SOC, Spirit of Compassion. Great, glad you guys are here. Hey, Stephanie, you're amazing too. Um, so a lot of great questions coming through already. I'm seeing them fly up, so I'm trying to kind of get them getting the questions to slow down if I can. You know, it's a good one, Ira, um, food question. Hello, what are your thoughts about coffee? So, okay, my real thoughts about coffee, you know, matcha tea, uh, chocolate, the caffeine industry. The caffeine industry, just they really want to control people and that's their, like, that's their mission. It's get people addicted, get people hooked and own their soul. That's what the caffeine industry wants to do. And I'm not talking about really good hearted, good intentioned people who start up, you know, a coffee shop, a coffee business, um, you know, whatever. They want to sell a really good matcha tea. I'm not talking about that, that kind of thing where it's that. I'm talking about the industry above them that gets them addicted too. It's, it's an addiction. Caffeine's a drug. Okay, it sounds harsh. It's all good. But what happens is women get hair thinning and it comes from years of caffeine. Not every, not everybody. The hair thinning can happen for a few other reasons, a couple of other reasons. But, but for the most part, the caffeinated beverages, the chocolate, what it does is it beats down women's adrenals. And women need their adrenals super strong for pregnancies, for birthing babies, for the reproductive system, for the fact that they handle so much and they do more, do more, they do so much more than even men do. In so many cases, women are actually, you know, they have it much harder in many ways. Um, I mean, I know women, they have 20 jobs. I mean, 20 jobs. And and they're doing 20 jobs from the minute they wake up in the morning to the minute they go to bed. They're raising children, taking care of their family. They're working, you know, two jobs. They're doing all these things combined. And the caffeine is kind of like, it's a scary thing because it burns out the adrenals. It gets, it actually starts to beat down the adrenals hormone blend, the one that keeps hair on women's heads. And, and so, you know, Caffeine's a big part of that. Another thing it does, it, it causes chronic dehydration over time. It beats down the liver. It breaks down the liver. It gets it weak. It gets it stagnant and sluggish. Um, and it causes adrenaline surges for people to be in fight and flight every day. So that's, that's the whole thing. So what do I think about coffee? If you're look, if you got nothing going on, there's no, so you have no symptoms, you have nothing wrong, you feel great, everything's good. And you want to do coffee drinks and you want to do much tea and you want to eat chocolate, fine. I mean, it's, you know, it's not that I'm like freaking out or anything about it. It's just if you got fatigue, if you have symptoms, if you got some, some brain fog, if you have issues of all kinds of different kinds, let's get down to the bottom of those issues. Let's get down to the bottom of fatigue and brain fog and anxiety and depression and, you know, and but the chains of addiction, or the, the caffeine industry, it's a monster that has shareholders at the top. And those shareholders want to make sure every girl and every woman, every man too, is addicted in every way possible to caffeine. That's the industry. They want them all hooked and they want it to own the person's soul. And they want it to, they, the caffeine industry knows that if they can just control women on a caffeine addiction, they got them. They, they're set. They're set, and they can they can make trillions off of off of caf, you know caffeine from there on out. It's just it's a really it's a really important topic. Um, Lisa says coffee is my biggest obstacle because it's 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 a tough one. It's like it's it's an addiction, and I listen. I don't blame you one bit. You need to know this. Like when when the industries get hooked on something. And they don't teach us otherwise, and they don't give us opportunities, and we don't get these opportunities to find out what's going on with us, and why we have brain fog, or why we got fatigue, and why we don't feel good. And the industries don't want us to know how to fix those things. They want us 
uh, hooked on that coffee. So Lisa, it's not like it's not like it's your fault on any level. And plus, it tastes good when you put sugar in it. And you put, you know, I, you know, if you put sugar in coffee and you put whatever soy cream or soy whatever soy creamer or cream in it, whatever you want to do, it tastes good, right? And so that's a whole thing on its own. But but it's not your fault if it's your biggest obstacle. You're a good person. You didn't do anything wrong. Not at all. It's it's the industry is evil. I'm just gonna be straight out. The coffee matcha tea caffeinated industry i don't care how woke or evolved it all seems with the cutest coffee you know um like coffee campaigns and matcha tea campaigns out there i have respect for for owners of these companies as far as not the not the industry itself but respect for coffee shop owners and uh matcha tea brands that are trying to get their first tea, matcha tea out to for people like high quality i got respect for everybody good chocolate i got respect for people who want to get their first you know they like want to they want to get into a, you know, start a company and a business and sell chocolate. I get respect for everybody. That's not it. That's not the people I'm talking about. Above them is this hierarchy, is this evil giant. And that evil giant is downright despicable. And that giant needs women, especially women, hooked on coffee. They want them hooked on caffeine. They want them hooked on, the, you know, the teas. They want them hooked on everything. And... It's really sad, and they want to own women's souls, and that's what that industry wants to do. I know this for a fact. That this is what they do, and um, and it's you know it's one of those things. Hey, Brandy, you're awesome too. Um, there, you know. So I briefly saw something you talked about with the dangers of diatomaceous earth. By the way, so diatomaceous, diatomaceous earth particles. Um, and someone said, I didn't know this, but I took it I took it for about two weeks straight, as did my sister. Now we both have issues with her joints being way too loose and they feel like they could easily just come out of their sockets. Plus my knees start to feel like they're tearing for no reason. Just walking and standing makes them hard, start, start to tear. Um, have to sometimes wear a knee brace now, shoulders hurt and everything pops. Will this ever fully heal? Is there something I can do um, with the, the whole diatomaceous earth thing? And, and the side effects. So that's diatomaceous. I've, I've, I've been anti-diatomaceous earth particles from the beginning. Um, not a big fan of it. From, you know, what I've seen and what Spirit of Compassion, some say SOC, right? Spirit of Compassion has told me is it's just not great for the immune system. Not great for the immune system. And it's hard on the digestive tract. So it's those two things here. So if you have something going on like an Epstein-Barr, and your sister has an Epstein bar, and you got this Epstein bar sitting inside of you, and it's probably about to come out and do its thing. And low-grade viral infection, I talk about, you know, in Cleanse to Heal, when people have the Epstein bars, and they have fibromyalgia, and they have all these other, you know, um, joint pain and all these different symptoms. And you take the diatomaceous earth particles, or you take, you know, however in what form, or you breathe them in, it, it, it kind of, it's hard on the immune system. And when it's hard on the immune system, anything else can creep up. Anything can creep up. So um, everybody has a, a chance to heal. Everybody has an opportunity to get past whatever, you know, adversities they're up against with their health and have a chance to heal, you know. And the angels are always on our side. They're always looking out for us, you know. Um, and I'm going to talk more about that every now and then too. But yeah, it's just, but, but I just, I always tell people, you know, stay away from diatomaceous earth. But I tell people to stay away from a lot of things. The caffeine, I tell them, because that will knock knock the immune. I've seen caffeine make people so sick, so sick, and um, and you know it's unbelievable, really. And then the same, I tell, I tell people stay away from nutritional yeast. I tell people to stay a lot of th away from things that people don't know about. Bentonite clay, stay away from bentonite clay. Stay away from apple cider vinegar. I bet you, I just angered a whole bunch of people just now, right? You guys are probably like all upset, but stay away from apple cider vinegar. It'll just pickle your liver. Um, it'll stress out your system. All of that. I talk about all what it does. So going through the questions right now, Deborah says I'm so addicted. You know what? You know the thing is with the caffeine industry, it, which is really sad, is even when you know you're addicted and you can't break it, that's how powerful that is. And chocolate's all fun and all. You know, you see influencers eating their healthy chocolates, wanting to put their healthy chocolates out, their cacao. And they're just, they're sucked in. They're sucked into the madness. 
to the industries controlling them and their soul. So it's all about like, it's amazing how it works. Um, so here's a question here, Charlene. I just want to I just want to thank you, the divine and the angel of compassion, for turning us on to celery juice. I, I thank Spirit of Compassion all the time about celery juice. Once I began doing the protocol correctly, the course correction was fast. Anthony, I thank you for being a superb instrument and in helping us. Bless your heart. So you're working on the protocol properly. I'm so proud of you. That means you probably read Cleanse the Heal. You're learning. This is a heavy medical text. This is like a heavy book. It's a medical textbook. It's packed. It's comprehensive. Um, go to the library, get it free, or Amazon has 51% off sale right now, $16.99. It's unbelievable sale on, on Amazon.com US. Um, uh, Sixima, any chance on bee venom therapy? specifically to treat Lyme or other chronic diseases. Okay, so my opinion on that, any opinion on that? Sorry, on bee uh, venom therapy. So um, here's the thing with bee venom therapy, okay? I, I'm not trying to take away somebody's therapy if they really find relief or they really find something out of it that they really like. But I can talk about it here on what I know about it and what Spirit of Compassion has taught me about it and what I teach doctors about it too, is that what's happening is with, with it, it's, it's an adrenaline response is what occurs. So when you get stung by a bee, when you get stung by a bee on your leg or on, on your body somewhere, and usually with, uh, with, with bee therapy when they do this is, they, you, you sting the thigh or you sting the knee and in the, in the arm too. But, but what happens is it prompts the adrenals to flood. So instantly your adrenals are flooding and flooding and flooding. It's, it's, an, it's a serious adrenal surge. When you get stung by a bee, adrenaline is pouring in just from your adrenals, okay? And so when that's happening, you guys, what, what you do is you get steroid relief. So you're getting steroidal relief. So that's how the therapy works. So when you have neurological conditions, like any kind of neurological condition, you have aches and pains, tingles and numbness, ticks and spasms, you know, like you, you, you know, uh, limb weaknesses, you know, people with multiple sclerosis or they have MS or they have ALS or they have other kind of condition, whatever it is, and they're doing the bee sting therapy, it's prompting their adrenals. They're self-treating themselves with, with, with steroids. They're using their own steroid to treat their condition. Now, what I don't like about this is that the adrenaline is corrosive and it, it's, it's agitating. So you have somebody with multiple sclerosis or somebody with a neurological condition that the doctors don't know why they're sick. Medical research and science doesn't know why people are sick. They don't have answers. If you want to know why people are sick, well, these, these autoimmune conditions, you get cleanse the heal so you can read the true causes. Medical medium information is the only source that has that information out there. Other than that, everywhere else is just a game of like a cryptic game of nonsense. But anyway, the bottom line is, is that when your adrenals are flooding because you're doing bee sting therapy, you're self-treating using your own adrenaline as a rush, as a steroid. And then what it does is it gives you relief. It's the same thing with like the, the same thing with some other things that occur. Now, um, it could be a temporary fix, but you'll notice with neurological conditions, it's only temporary. It only the relief only lasts for an hour or half a day, or a quarter of a day, or a day, or two days, depending on how much adrenaline was released. And so if you had a lot of adrenaline released, I noticed that bee sting therapy, when you first get it, gives you some relief because a lot of adrenaline gets released. But on your 10th therapy or your 50th bee sting, you, you don't get the response is the same and you're, you need more bee stings and you need more bee stings. I'm not a fan of it. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend bee sting therapy. I never did and I'm not a fan of it. Um, but that's, that's what I know about it if it helps. Anna, gosh, I started to drink a little a little of coffee again and my alopecia started to get worse but I didn't see the link I you know it's incredible that you you, you understand this now because of the, the medical meme information about that but that's what it does it's it's the, the industry actually is training women to be addicted to the to the caffeine the caffeine kills women's adrenals and nobody cares nobody cares 
And then you get these like fake doctors that that have their podcast and they're just like, oh yeah, matcha tea is great. It's got healing benefits and it's got, oh you, you know, it's like, oh you know, you dummy, you know, it's like, you don't get it. You want to keep women addicted too. And then they just burn out their adrenals. And then when it's pregnancy time, you don't have it. Here's the here's what caffeine does. Caffeine um, makes pregnancies harder and makes birth, birth, giving birth harder because you blow out your adrenals early on in your life. And then you, then you get pregnant and then you have a baby and you in, in the giving birth process is much harder because your adrenals are maxed out and sometimes shot from coffee and all that. And this is medical medium information. Nowhere else is this information. Like all the information on here, if you're new here, it's all medical medium information. It's not somewhere else. It's not somewhere at so-and-so's. It's not wherever. And if it is, they took little tidbits and didn't cite it back to medical medium information. Um, Cindy, after eight years of whole foods and clean eating, I cannot lose weight. I need help losing weight. 30 pounds to get me back to pre-baby weight and I have autoimmune issues, please, please, please help. So first thing is autoimmune issues. You can go to the autoimmune section and cleanse to heal. And you can see back there. And you can see there's a protocol. You can take that protocol to your doctor or practitioner if you want, or just work with it if you want to do. And you'll see there are different supplements, what to do. Take it slow, one little thing at a time. But what you learn is, what was your autoimmune disease name that a doctor gave you too? And you can just go straight into autoimmune or you can find that name specifically in the book. But the point is, is that what they don't know is what's behind autoimmune is a viral condition. And I talk to doctors about this all the time. And, you know, and I teach doctors this information. If it's classified under autoimmune, that's a viral issue. And where do viruses go and where are they throughout a person's lifetime? Inside their liver. And their liver gets stagnant and sluggish and has this viral, these viral issues in there. And then when it gets stagnant and sluggish, and you can eat clean, you can eat whole foods your whole life, but it's not fixing the problem. What I would, what I would do is I would look in, I would go to the library, get the book for free if you want, or on sale at Amazon right now. And an amazing sale actually. And what I would do is I would look at the 369 cleanse, maybe the 369 advanced cleanse, maybe the mono eating cleanse, one of the mono eating cleanses, take your time and look. And what you're doing is, first of all, you're getting rid of fats. What I would do if I was somebody that was battling weight for many years, I would bring down those fats, bring them down in the diet. And you can learn about that in here. Give your liver a chance to recover and clean things up. And if you got the autoimmune issue, learn what the cause is of that issue. Learn what viral issue, what virus is responsible for your autoimmune problem. So then you can take action, start getting the liver better, start lowering the viral uh, load, start dropping the viral issue down, and boom, all of a sudden the weight starts coming off. Maybe do the 369 periodically. I'm just giving you any suggestions. Are you doing lemon water, 32 ounces of lemon water every morning? That's something to consider. Are you doing 32 ounces of celery juice every morning? Are you keeping fats down throughout the morning? Maybe do the morning cleanse? All these things matter. You can get weight off, you can. And it's, it's, it's important. So Dina says, it's divinely guided information. Thank you, SOC and Anthony, bless your heart. Deanna, you're amazing. Um, and Yep, so true, Michelle. Um, so, Manic, my, uh, Monique, my, my daughter is suffering from chronic headaches and blurry eyes with burning. So, chronic headaches and blurry eyes with burning. Stabbing pain for past few months. Which book is best for healing? Um, so, when it comes to the chronic headaches, you can, uh, you can look at the headache section right here. So, if you look at Cleanse to Heal, what I like about Cleanse to Heal, it's so comprehensive. There's so much information to, to customize protocols. Take the book to the doctor, to your pediatrician or to, to your, you know, whoever your caregiver is for your daughter to and show the book. But headaches um, and migraines, that little section, it talks about supplements and dosages. That's one thing you can do. The other thing is you got all the different cleanses. What I would do, okay, if she was my daughter, I would, I would be focused on toxic heavy metals, Maybe do the heavy metal detox smoothie, heavy metal detox cleanse in here. 
I would consider that as a possibility. I would look at the headache section in the back. And you don't have to jump right in. You can just do 16 ounces of celery juice in the morning on an empty stomach every morning. That's all you have to do. Just start with that and some lemon water and you take it from there. Slow and, and you can just take one step at a time. How can I speed up the healing so I don't get bloated at all anymore? So what happens with the bloating um, jubilee is that um, there's a couple of things you're doing. Like, what are you doing? Like, what are your foods? You're staying away from the dairy products, staying away from the eggs, right? Staying away from the gluten. Those three are so important because bloating for many people, and I talk about it in the books, is the streptococcus bacteria that sits inside the intestinal tract, okay? And that, coupled with low HCL, so the gastric glands get burned out, another thing, back to the caffeine thing for one second. Well, that's another thing all the caffeine beverages do when the chocolate does the caffeine, it burns out the stomach glands, so then you get bloating later on in life. That's another thing too. So not only do women get their hair loose, lost later on, they get their adrenals get shot, so they have difficulty giving birth. They get bloating later on down the road. I mean, the caffeine industry just does a number on women. It's 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 despicable, really. Um, but you want to get the HCL, the, the stomach glands built up. You want to get your liver bile function better. It sounds like it's hard, but no. I mean, you can literally just take cleanse the heel, look at the liver section there, work on getting that going on there. Um, and so, and Margaret... Um, oh my, I am a clinical nutritionist. Amazing. And I cannot believe what I am seeing. All these questions on things don't work. Uh, on all these questions on things don't work. So many of this not evidence-based. Folks, be careful. Oh, really, really good question right there. Um, so, you know, did you, you don't think any of the folks here went to two, three, four, five doctors? Um, doctors? not just clinical nutritionists, but actual specialists and neurologists and medical doctors. That's one thing, Anna, I want to, I want to ask you. So I want to ask you a couple questions because a lot of people, most people in the medical medium community, they've actually been through 20 doctors and three specialists, three neurologists, psychiatrists, because they get told to go to there for, for things because their neurological symptoms are driving them crazy. And all of that and they've seen also nutritionists and they tried different things and i think that insults people so it's not going to insult me I, li I like you saying that because it gives me a chance to just talk about the topic in general and but you're insulting people who they're not stupid so and um people go to doctors and they've been to a lot of doctors and they're still stuck with all their different symptoms and conditions so, and they're suffering and they're struggling. So I would say, Anne, have some respect. Um, and they've seen their nutritionists and they've seen their health coaches. So I would just say, consider them and maybe not just think about yourself and think about me. Kind of what I do is I'm thinking about them. So I'm thinking of the person who's suffering with the worst trigeminal neuralgia where they want to kill themselves, okay? I'm thinking about the 20 year old who can't go to college and can't even look at the computer screen because she can't see properly because she has brain fog and blurry eyes. I worry about and fatigue and she's and her mom has taken her already to 20 doctors. Um, I'm worried about them and I'm worried about the people who have, you know, who can't get into a car because their anxiety is so bad they have a seizure before they get to their car and they can't even leave the house. Um, I worry about the people that are going through all this and the thousand and, and here's the, and the thousands and thousands of people that are going through this. So, Anne, what I would do is instead of being concerned about your credentials and my no credentials, okay, because I never said it was a doctor, be concerned about all the people that can't find answers and they're suffering, and then be open-minded to the thousands of healing stories that medical medium information is, is brought. And, and think about the street cred. If you look at the gold level label on this book, okay, you won't see that gold label on um, other books in health. And, and if you look at the gold label, it says millions of copies sold in the medical medium series worldwide, millions of copies and millions of people with the street cred and have reported that millions have been healing and healed with medical medium books. So I, I'm just saying, I hope you're doing good with you're doing and the work you're doing in your practice. But just so you know, um, I'm about the sick and the suffering and people who can't get answers. Kelsey. 
would like help understanding why I get debilitating panic attacks randomly triggered by fear or not, um, being able to sleep. Once I start a panic attack, then it's nearly impossible to stop without taking conventional pharmaceuticals. I've been healing with MM for two years and I got the panic attack and I got the panic attack shortly after trying the Advanced 369 for two days, was off B12 for two months recently. Maybe that could be related. So a couple of things too. So um, you get debilitating panic attacks, they're triggered and and been nearly impossible to stop without taking conventional pharmaceuticals. So the thing is with panic attacks is that's with panic attacks and anxiety, you get all that sort of trigeminal nerve stuff. So phrenic nerves, trigeminal nerve, you got your, you got your um, trigeminal nerve, you got your phrenic nerves, you got your vagus nerve. So all those nerves work together. So they're all part of panic attacks. Vagus nerve is the big one for panic attacks right there all on its own. And so what happens is that nerves get inflamed and they get hypersensitive. And when they get hypersensitive, then you know you can be susceptible to a panic attack at any point, any time. And, and fear can trigger one at any moment. I know when people have severe anxiety and they got, they got, um, they're very sensitive, they can have a panic attack really easily, anything can trigger it. It could even be trying something new. I've seen people try something new for the first time, no matter what that is. I've seen people say, well, I'm going to try coconut oil, but I never tried it before. Let me try it. And they have a panic attack as they're trying it. Or someone who's trying something new or someone who's trying even a new pharmaceutical, they have a panic attack while they're trying a new pharmaceutical. And what happens is when the vagus nerve gets so hypersensitive and you end up getting PTSD because of it, so you end up getting the whole PTSD issue, and then we, we run into trouble. So then we're, it's like a vicious cycle. We got the hypersensitive nerves, the vagus nerve and phrenic nerves, and then we have the PTSD associated with it because then we get, we, it just, it turns into a vicious cycle. It's so hard for people and I'm so sorry you're suffering with that and all that. So if you go into the book, if you go into medical medium, you can take the book to your doctor, you'll see that there's an anxiety section there and that's a great place to start. And, um, and, Another thing too is, is that with anxiety, you can also have a low grade viral infection with toxic heavy metals, creating that inflammation with the vagus nerve and phrenic nerve. So with the vagus nerve and phrenic nerves, you can have the toxic heavy metals. Mercury is the big one. So mercury is definitely the big one with anxiety. That's a huge, huge piece of a lot of people's anxieties and then the anxiety conditions. And then the other things, low grade viruses like the Epstein-Barr. And what happens is Epstein-Barr tends to feed off of mercury, tends to release a neurotoxin. The neurotoxin floats around, it saturates itself on a nerve. Once it saturates itself on a nerve like, like a vagus nerve or phrenic nerves, they get hypersensitive. And then we have a panic attack. So if I had anxiety, I'd be in the anxiety section. I'd, I'd, there's so many ways to go about it. What I would do is I would do the mono eating cleanse. That's what I would do. Something really simple because um, when it's simple and basic like that and you keep your fats low and you're doing the mono eating cleanse, like the potato mono, mono eating cleanse or the celery juice and then you have, then you have the um, steamed potatoes and then you have the smoothie and so forth and the lemon water. And, and when you do, you know, when you do that kind of thing, when you're doing like the mono eating cleanse, it's so easy and gentle on sensitive nerves. And that's what I would recommend for myself if I had anxiety or a friend or a loved one had that. Go to your doctor, ask them what they think about the book. And and I don't know what you have been doing for the last couple of years or so, you know, and what's happening. So I don't know like what, what you've been up to in the last two, three years, what you're eating, what you're not eating. All of these things play a role. If you do nutritional yeast, that's an, that could really, really build up in your system with all that MSG, create a lot of anxiety because the nerves can't handle MSG. Um, you could also, you know, there's also different bugs we, we share and we pick up and, and you know, we, we just end up in contact with that, that along the way. But, what I, but I, what I would recommend with anxiety is see the anxiety section, take a look at the supplements. You can customize it for yourself. You can talk to your talk doctor about it too and take a little bit at a time. Maybe do a mono eating cleanse. 369 cleanse is still amazing for that. Of course, a lot of people heal that. From, I mean, another thing too, you know, when you're doing something new, did you, you know, 
it's coming out of it. What are you going back to? to eating something to where you used to eat? Are you, what are you doing forging ahead? And all these things matter. I talk about it in detail here. But for anxiety though, um, I talk about what supplements, what dosages that are really critical. You can customize your protocol for it. I talk about the heavy metals. Um, another thing too, you can just do the heavy metal detox cleanse. So that's another thing. I was talking to a doctor a couple of weeks ago. This doctor's all about anxiety, just nothing about anxiety, just nothing else, all about anxiety, panic attacks and different varieties of anxiety. And they're really intrigued and invested in the medical medium information and they want to learn. And they were saying, you know what, what's really helping with my patients, they were telling me is the heavy metal detox cleanse, because I told this doctor toxic heavy metals like mercury are responsible for so many anxiety cases. And um, his doctor said it's doing wonders for so many different cases of anxiety and panic and everything else. So maybe that would be helpful too, information. Okay, here's a question here. Please, I pray you could talk about numbness in body from insect bites like spiders, absolutely terrified. Um, if you, did you have a, a spider bite? Did you have one? I mean, I know the black widow can cause full body paralysis if it's not taken care of, if you don't get emergency medical attention or, or medical attention. You know, the black widow spider can be really annoying and, and cause that, you know, when you do get bit over time, the brown recluse is really annoying too. These, these spiders are annoying. I mean, were you diagnosed with a spider bite? Was it an official spider bite? Or are you just getting numbness in the body and nobody knows, but you thought you had a bite? Like there's so many different avenues and I'm not trying to insult you at all or throw you off. That's not it. You might have got, you might even seen this bite, spider bite you. And then, <laughs> and then the doctor said, yes, you had a a brown recluse spider bite. Yes, you had a black widow spider bite. Yes, you had a wolf spider bite. So, so that's one thing there. Um, but spider bites, yeah, they can be really annoying. They have a they, they have a neurotoxic effect. So you get numbness that could last for years or just last for the moment. But you get numbness because of neurotoxins. Because spider bite venom is neurotoxic to some degree in a lot of cases. So meaning like. To some people, they're not that sensitive. Some people are more sensitive. I've seen people get spider bites. It's like it didn't even happen. I, I got a friend who can have a black widow bite their hand and they're just aggravated for a week and then it's gone. But but no, but it's serious stuff. And um, But numbness, you know, it's no matter what the trigger was, say it was a spider bite, then I would go into tingles and numbness, neurological symptoms and cleanse to heal because you got sensitive nerves. I would go into neurological symptoms, take a look, talk to your doctor. You can take a look at the different supplements to help with it. Maybe focus on the foods. I would I would focus on um, maybe the anti-bug cleanse and so forth in the book. But yeah, there's, but I understand. Danielle says, I healed my severe anxiety and panic attacks thanks to MM. Danielle, that's really inspiring for anybody with panic attacks. Anybody going through so much, um, you know, all that. That's <laughs> Michelle just said. That's a really, that was a really good one for Michelle right there. We have SOC, no bogus studies here. Well, you know what, Michelle? You know, you're not, you're, you're not, you're not green at this. Okay, you know that you can have all the studies out there, all the food studies, all the whatever studies, and you can have all that galore, but. There are 250 million people in the U.S. alone that have symptoms that doctors can't figure out how to get rid of or they can't get rid of. And, and then you get, you can, there's the not so sick with some symptoms and then the really sick. And they've been to 50 doctors and, um, and with all the studies that you can find and do. So you know this. I don't, Michelle, what's weird is I don't know why it's just some of the people don't know this that are professionals. Like, how do they not know that? Like, is it because they've never been sick yet and they just don't understand what it's like to be sick so they just believe in this fairyland tale that the answers are out there? I don't know how they can do that. You know, you know the difference. You know what it's like to be sick, stay sick after 20 doctors and 20 nutritionists, and then not have answers until you find answers. But you know what that's like. I, I, it's the bubble people are in. It's just confusing me, it still does. Um, Ashley, what helps with acid reflux? Um, you know, first of all, I mean, 
you can go really simple. Actually, you can go so so gentle and simple. You can you can go with eight ounces of celery juice, just eight ounces of celery juice. You can do aloe vera, and I talk about that in here. You can do a little bit maybe aloe water. You can just do the aloe water where you blend a little bit of the inside gel to a fresh aloe leaf, and I talk about that in here. And you could do just a little aloe water each day and see what moves it. Because what happens is we get a little bacteria in our gut. We get a little bit of that the old strep in our system. Everybody has it. Nobody doesn't have strep. We all have it. And a little bit of strep in my system. And then, you know, and then the liver gets a little stagnant and sluggish, even in younger people. Um, the stomach glands get, get tired even in younger people. All these different things. But it's really simple as like, okay, let me just start out with maybe a little bit of celery juice, eight ounces. Maybe start out with 16 ounces, which would be ideal. Every single morning, 16 ounces of celery juice on an empty stomach. And take it from there one day at a time. And talk to your practitioner. Tell them what you're doing. But that's something just to start with. And do a little bit of aloe water. And you don't, you know, and, and of course, stay away from processed foods. Of course. I mean, everybody's doing that right now. But... Um, but yeah, so me too, 787, I have been to over 25 doctors and spent tens of thousands of dollars over the past 17 years. And I'm now, and I'm now I'm finally healing thanks to medical medium information. Thank you. So me too, I'm, I'm honored you're here. I'm honored you found the medical medium information. God bless you. I'm so happy. I'm proud of you. 17 years of going through hell and back. I call it hell and back, and I call it, and now you're rising out of the ashes. That's what that is. Exactly. And what's strange, YouTube, is that, isn't that strange that, but yet a, a couple of nutritionists or some dietitian or some other doctor doesn't know like that exists? They don't know that. And that tells me they're just not experienced or something and they live in a bubble. But exactly, you've been through hell and back. Well, that's the world I live in. I live in the world of 35 years, and even going back before that with my gift of receiving information, spirit of compassion, hearing his voice as of age four, and knowing people suffer. And when I was age six, seven, eight years old, told people suffer. Every day from spirit of compassion told how many people are suffering and how they can't find answers and how they're on Mattress Island and some are losing their lives and nobody cares and how science research doesn't have answers. I've been taught that by spirit of compassion since I was a child. Okay, and so it's amazing someone just, of course, wants to discriminate against me and step on right on my face and walk on over all the people with chronic and spit on all the people with chronic illness. It's amazing how it works. It's actually really sad. Um, so, okay, Roanne, France, aloe water considered a supplement during mono cleanse. I want to continue taking fresh aloe. During, yeah, you can. Fresh aloe, you absolutely can. There's no question. I would, if it was me, I would if, if I wanted to. Absolutely. It's great. I'm glad I'm answering questions tonight, you guys. So good. Spirit of Compassion Talk. I want to say this, okay? People don't realize how hard it is for me. I have to hear Spirit of Compassion as I'm sitting here talking to you guys. So I'm hearing a voice here perfectly clear, like someone's yelling in my ear or talking my ear loud. I, you know, it's like having an ear pod in. Of, of 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 a podcast or an ear pod of music or something somebody talking and so i have to do that and read comments and deliver my information all combined and so it's funny when someone says oh i don't like it he's jittery today or something on there he's not easy to watch are you kidding if you only knew what i had to juggle <laughs> um Lisa Pittman, drinking my lemon water at the end of the second day of the original 369 and taking it easy. Wow, that's fine. Trying to be compassionate with myself in the process, in this process. Thank you, Anthony and SSC. Lisa, I'm proud of you. I love the fact that you're doing that. Incredible, incredible. Uh, I'm proud of all you guys, too. Like, all you guys are working hard. Um... So Natasha, help me prevent migraine during my period. What can I do? Natasha, I'd love to talk about that for a second because what happens is the reason why the migraines come during menstruation is because our, not our, because I'm a man, but women's immune systems drop. All women, this isn't you, but all women's immune systems drop 
80% of their immune system goes to the reproductive system. So when you have your period, 80% of your immune system goes to your reproductive system to protect it. That's that's and that's medical meme information that's it's not out there. You can't Google it or whatever. Nobody knows that. 20% of your immune system is left covering the rest of the body, taking care of everything else in the body. So that means if your uh, migraines, okay, or are because of a little bit of strep that's in your system all these years, a little bit of strep inside the sinuses, um, a little bit of, of Epstein-Barr inside the liver, or however, or nerves are sensitive, or a little bit of toxic heavy metals, all of it that I talk about for migraines and things like that, and sensitive nerves like vagus nerve, phrenic nerves, trigeminal nerves, and you get the headache, you get the, like the neurological migraines. So when it happens, that it happens during menstruation. And because, and it could happen during ovulation a little bit too. So it can happen there too, because 40% of a woman's immune system goes directly to the reproductive system during ovulation, leaving only 60% everywhere else. So it's, it's because of that, you're not, when women go into their cycles and ovulation, they're not running on a hundred percent immune system. And then anything they have, that's what happens with women. They, that's why acne breaks out, that's streptococcus during cycles or shortly after cycles. Or so sort of, that's why um, when women have fatigue, they get more fatigue during their cycles because they're dealing with something else and their immune system is going all the way to the reproductive system instead of watching everything else. It's, it's the difference between men and women. It's one of the one of these differences between men and women. Men's immune systems just, unless they burn themselves out, their immune system stays just level. It stays level. It's it's so unfair to women. Women, their immune system has to has to actually juggle and, and take care of the reproductive system, which is how life is gonna move forward here in planet Earth. Um, um, yeah, so, and, um, so what I would do is like, when you look at the book, take the book to your doctor with the migraines too. You can take the book to your doctor. You can look at the protocol for supplements in the back of the doctor for headaches and migraines. You can look in the back of the book. You can see all the different supplements. You can see the protocols. You can take that. I mean, I would, uh, if I was getting the migraines, I would consider the mono eating cleanse for sure and, and look at the supplements in the back. Um, Shelly Ann, I've healed chronic acid reflux with drinking celery juice every morning. I had it really bad. So that's incredible. So your chronic acid reflux already got better. You healed it. You're drinking every morning and I've been drinking it for two and a half years now. Oh my God, Shelly, that's incredible. That's incredible. Two and a half years drinking celery juice. You healed your acid reflux. I'm like so proud of you. It's like, you know what it is? You like, you, you, and you probably went to a lot of doctors for that acid reflux. You probably went, went through a lot. And sometimes it takes time to heal. Some people, Shelly, some people want to be healed in one week. You know, they want to be healed in one week, but then they don't do enough of the protocols or customize it right like you did. And it's amazing. So I'm looking through more questions, you guys. So, staccata. Oh my goodness! Thank you for the period answer. So for, right? Suffered for a very long time with different things. Well, that's what happens when you have your periods, and then all these different problems happen. And when your periods are coming, um, everything feels worse because you have these other conditions, and then the immune system can't be taking care of all that. So it. It goes to your cycle only, and when it goes to your cycle only, oh my God! Everything that you deal with whoop, rises up. That's what I, you know, and, and I, I like trying to get people and w women to work on their conditions, get down to the bottom of their conditions. So when their periods come, they're not, they're not mortified or scared or PTSD'd out that their period's going to come and cause more trouble. Um, folklore family, you and spirit helped me recover from lung cancer. Uh, bless your heart. I'm proud of you. You worked hard for it. Nothing. Um... Hi, Anthony. My mom's nails are going brown and coming off. Do you know what this could be? So, um, good question, nothing. Um, what happens with fingernails, they're a big indication of the liver. So, big indication of the liver. So, what would, you know, what would mom like to do? Would she do a little bit of celery juice? You know, it's funny with her, with her moms, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, it's some moms out there, they'll do everything. And some will just be like, well, I'll do a little bit of celery juice now and I don't really want to do this, but I'll try that. I would consider 
a little bit of celery juice because instantly that's going to start going to the liver a little bit. Um, and I would consider, you know, some B12, you know, that's, you know, one thing I would consider. But when it comes down to nails um, and, and she can go to the doctor, she can take the information too. So nothing, she can go to the doctor, she can um, take the information and see what the doctor wants to do or anything. And you can look in the back of the different stuff back there. But, but foods are a great way to start. And you can talk to the doc, talk to your mom's doctor and find out what, which, you know, find out what your doctor feels like for different things. I know that spinach, and I talked to another doctor recently about nails and stuff. Um, I recommended spinach and spinach soups. So you take raw spinach, you put it in a blender, you make a spinach soup. I talk about the recipes and all the medical medium books. And the spinach soup really does help with that, with the liver and the nails, and coupled with a little bit of celery juice and you know, um, aloe water, lemon water. These are just little basics and she can talk to her doctor about what she likes or not to do what the doctor likes. Carolyn says, I bought all the books. Yay! You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You know, because I know that if you're buying all the books, then you're going to tell somebody else, hey, look, you know, then you can give information and you can help somebody. You can help a family member. You can help a friend. And then... It's all that matters. It's like the people that are in your life and the people that you love, you want them to have an answer and, um, and healing. So, so Anna says, I pray my daughter would start listening to you now. Her, her periods are horrible and she has brain fog. I remember being like her in my 30s if I only knew this stuff. And Anna, I know it's, it's, that's what happens. It's like years go by and decades go by. No one, everybody forgets what happens. You don't forget. You know what you've been through in your life. But I noticed that the younger people that aren't so sick and they don't know what everybody went through and they're just kind of experimenting for fun on all these fun things and doing their health channels. I get it. And But honestly, I mean, every, the history gets forgotten. Like history. Like just who cares if millions of people suffered from Lyme disease. Many of them lost their lives because of bad treatments. Who cares if people suffered the worst endometriosis and, and, and periods? Like all of a sudden, you know, and I care, and I know you care, and you know, you know that, you know it matters. Yvonne, can you please mention food to focus on for like in uh, Plano players? So, um, I'm not, look, the funny thing is someone will say, well, he likes celery juice for everything. That's, it's one of the medical medium tools. And millions of people are, hundreds of millions of people are drinking celery juice now. And there's a reason, because it really does, it is one of those incredible medical medium tools that Spirit of Compassion brought here. And it should never be underestimated. So anything with like in Plano Polaris, Polaris I, it's great. You can use a little bit of celery juice. It's one aspect. What I like to do with that condition, personally, if I had that condition, is I would be on low fats, really low fats. So if you're an animal protein person and you like animal protein, maybe once a day, only do animal protein once a day. And I would, I would do it at the end of the day. I would never do eggs. I would stay away from eggs. I would stay away from dairy products completely. Butter, milk, cheese, kefir, yogurt, I would get rid of if I had that condition. And so, and I would stay off of the caffeine if I had that condition, if you possibly can. So these are some of the things I would do. I would stay off of fermented foods if I had that condition. So I'm just giving you what to stay away from, what to bring in. Um, well, leafy greens are important. Can you do some lettuces, some mosh, a little bit of kale if you can, some spinach. The spinach soups are great. Can you do that? Can you do the lemon water in the morning? Do you like any fruit at all? Are you afraid of fruit? There's so many people afraid of fruit. It's so sad. Do you like any fruit? You can do the smoothies. So with lichen plantar planaris, what, uh, planaris, what you want to do is is you want to do the, like the heavy metal detox cleanse. It's something I would focus on. Um, that's a possibility there. You can you can take it one step at a time. With that condition, you can really look at the book and you can say, well, what cleanse? You can start with the most basic, gentlest cleanse. Take it from there. Take it all to your doctor. Ask your doctor that question too. Um, what does, there was a question there that went up that was pretty funny. What does medical medium mean uh, by Pauline? You know, it's the funniest thing. I mean, my great grandfather, he, he, he named me that, he called me that. Um, and because at age four and from there on out, I heard a voice perfectly clear. 
and from the outside though, not from the inside, giving me advanced medical information that I put in all the books. There's no citations in these books. It's all original and unique information that's healing millions worldwide. And uh, that's the name I just, you know, there's, there's, you can call me anything, call me anything, but the gift is all the same of, of what the gift is, what's happened. And like spirit of capacity always tells me, you're not the gift at one, Anthony. Your gift is for everyone else. It's so every you're the messenger to deliver the information for everyone else so that they can have an opportunity to heal. And that's what the gift is. It's for people who are in need. Okay, uh, Michaela Derman, I eat only raw fruits, vegetables, and greens. From over for over a year now, but I'm bloating every time I eat. So you must have been dealing with a bloating problem for years and years and years. And what I would do to begin with is I would look and cleanse the heel. Get the book free at the library. Just go to the library. Don't even buy the book. Get it for free. Um, of course, you can get it on sale at Amazon right now. It, an incredible sale uh, for this book, personally for this book, whatever. Specifically, I mean. But bloating, go in the bloating section and take a look. And you can start there. But what I like to do for, it's not about fruits and vegetables. Like raw fruits and vegetables is not an answer. Um, and I think there's a confusion out there. People will say like, a medical medium is raw fruits and vegetables or fruits and vegetables. It's like, no, medical medium is a thousand different protocols and customizing for the specific condition of what's going wrong. So you're bloating. What's going on with that bloating? Well, find out what causes bloating. So you read that in the back here and you find out what causes bloating to begin with, okay? And then um, you learn that it's low hydrochloric acid. So low hydrochloric acid from years ago, from your whole life. So your stomach glands just have not returned to the, where they need to be yet. They haven't got to that place of where they need to be. The other, the other thing that happens is low bile reserves in your liver. So you can be on only raw fruits and vegetables and leafy greens, but are you doing fats? Are you burdening your liver? How much avocado are you doing? So really bad bloating cases, and I teach doctors this all the time, you wanna get the liver back, so you wanna get the bile reserves back. And one way you're doing that is you drop the fats. You drop the fats, get those fats down, and when you do that, you drop, you get rid of the nuts and seeds for a while. You get rid of the avocado, you get rid of the oils. And if you're doing animal proteins, get rid of the animal proteins for a while. Get rid of all the fats, whether plant-based or animal-based, whether you're a plant-based or animal-based. And, and what happens is you have all these old rotting proteins lining the intestinal tract, all these old rancid fats that have been there for years, 10, 20, 30 years. They're on the inside, you know, the intestinal tract lining. They need to finally get cleaned out and they will over time. So it takes a little time. Then you build up your hydrochloric acid in your stomach gland. You build up your liver. All these things matter. You clean out bacteria that's hiding in the gut, streptococcus hiding in all that gut. And then you do, you look at the book and you look, hey, you know what's going on, the cause of bloating. And then you look, mono eating cleanse. Celery juice is something you can bring in 32 ounces once a day. So fruits and vegetables is not enough. That's all great. And and raw fruits and vegetables is not enough. That's the difference between if you find somebody on YouTube and they're just a raw they're a raw foodie or something and they're doing raw fruits and vegetables and that's their thing, that don't mean anything when you're sick. What means when you're sick is what's wrong? What's the answer to whatever you're doing? And then how to use your fruits and vegetables, how to use them as tools. You know, is the is, is the bloating severe bloating and, and, and mono eating is something I look at when it's severe bloating. So like gastroparesis, severe bloating, all these different con conditions, mono eating is really important. So I hope that that helps. And celery juice, like 32 ounces every single morning. You can do fruits and vegetables, but if you're not doing 32 ounces every single morning and your aloe water and and doing and, and knowing what's wrong so you can do the say the mono eating cleanse see how all these things matter all the different ways you can heal and the different tools you can use and somebody could be like raw fruits and vegetables this doesn't mean anything but but I, i'm proud of you though that you're eating that clean it's just what i mean but it doesn't mean anything it means you have to know what's wrong then be able to customize it using healing tools the only place i've seen that still to this day whether anybody likes it or not is the medical medium books and information but that's from spirit of compassion, not because I'm smart. I tell you guys all the time, I'm not a smart guy. 
You know, yeah, I talk to doctors every single day and I teach doctors every day for years and years, but I'm not a smart guy. It comes from up here. Um, so it's all about knowing the cost. So it's like, well, what's the cost? You can be a fruit and vegetable expert out there on YouTube. You can be this person on YouTube, that person on YouTube, but do you know the cause of your condition? That's another thing too on all its own, but I'm proud of you, proud of you. Check out this book, Cleanse the Heal. You get it from the library, yay! <laughs> totally can get it from the library, that's so cool. I love that. I want people to get it for free if they can with the library. Um, Stacy, can you talk about detox reactions? Whoa, it's a question right there, detox reactions. I've been drinking celery juice for four weeks and it just had a nasty bout of shingles pop up. Can this happen? Not from celery juice. Um, like, There's people with shingles and they use celery juice to get rid of shingles. That's There's people out there that they, they, they have conditions caused by the shingles. So um, if you weren't doing your celery juice, the shingles was still coming. Um, that's, that's just how it works. It's just, if you were doing, if you were doing oil pulling <laughs> for a month and you had your shingles, it would be the oil pulling that caused it. It's just a normal, it's just life. It's like, it's like, that's how what we think when we're trying something new or anything and it happens to be around a time when something's already out. In order for shingles to come out, it had to been in the works for the last six months to a year. So shingles doesn't just come out. It's in the process of coming out. So it's in the process. It's usually you get it a year before, you get it six months before, and then it's in you. And it stays in you until it proliferates and proliferates, and then you have the rash. So, so um, four weeks and the shingles coming out, well, it's more like four months and the shingles comes out. Um, so Stacy, what I would do is look into the shingle section here and jump on this because get the book out for free at the library. Jump on it re in the sense where you want to take the protocols to your doctor that's in the shingles protocol so you can protect yourself from post shingles. Post shingles is the problem. Celery juice is helpful. Uh, I, I, I just, I, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't stop the celery juice. But there's so many things you can do for your immune system. And what else are you eating? Were you eating something else? You're drinking celery juice, but were you eating something else that feeds shingles? Because AIDS, because eggs feed shingles. So, it, you know, that's what happens with the eggs. They feed shingles. And what they also do, they feed all the different bugs. So that's what they do. So when it comes down, dairy products feeds shingles, you know. Eggs feed shingles. So Breezy, hi. I am wondering what to do for whole body twitching. Most in the chest, thighs, and head. Any suggestions would be great. So all the years, I mean, 35 years of helping so many people and helping so many people, the doctors, doctors, patients, and so forth, because I was always the guy where it was the bizarre symptoms guy. That's what it was. So um, back going back 35 years, he's the bizarre symptom guys. If you have a guy, and what happens is doctors would be like, okay, I know this guy. Um, talk to him. Let's get him on the phone. So doctor would contact me, have a patient on the phone. We'd all be on the phone together and go ahead, tell Anthony your bizarre symptoms and let's see what spirit of compassion has to say. And so spirit of compassion would give information to the doctor. And what happens is with twitches and spasms and all that would always would come through for the most part outside of some different viral issues and other things would be the toxic heavy metal. So mercury, that's a big one for twitches and spasms and all that stuff. So, you know, take, take the book to your doctor, look at the heavy metal detox cleanse and take a look. And you can go to the neuro, neurological section and you can see twitches, spasms, all that jerking, all that. So, yeah. Um, so, it's so many great questions, just reading questions along the way. Such a great night to have you guys on here tonight. So cup Janet's got an interesting question right here. If I don't if I don't plant based fats, so that means I think you're saying if I don't eat plant based fats, my blood sugar is not balanced. What do you suggest? Well, it's it's like this. It's if that means here's how it works. If you, it, it okay, if you stop your plant-based fats, so that'd be nuts, seeds, avocado, and all that. Your most those are high-calorie foods. You're most likely stopping those and not getting enough calories on the opposite end. 
So here's how it goes. So you're eating your plant-based diet. You stop the highest calorie part of your diet, which is the fats. So you stop eating two avocados a day. You stop eating, uh, you know, handfuls of cashews. You stop eating oils. You, st you stop those high calories. Okay. Once those are gone, you're under calorieing now without realizing. So you don't know how to like all of a sudden bring in enough potatoes, enough sweet potatoes, winter squash, enough bananas, enough, you know, a few dates, or you know, you're, and you have to also get in the mineral salts. Critical. So you can't just go off of all these fats and then not get some mineral salts in. You'll go under calories, you won't get enough mineral salts, plus you'll have fats in your system. So here's how it works. You've been eating your fats all your life. The minute you stop your fats, you don't, the fats don't go away. They're in the liver, they're in, they're in the bloodstream for three straight days after that. Then they're in the bloodstream for quite a while because you start, you start getting rid of toxic fat storages. So then you get, all of a sudden you got still more fat going into the bloodstream. So what it is, is what I'm suggesting, which is probably what's happening is you're going off your high calorie fats and you're under calorie for the moment and you're getting a swing because you're under calorie so then you're getting a little bit of a blood sugar drop. So you want to consider you want to make sure you're doing enough of the of, you know enough things like you're doing the celery juice for the mineral salts. You're getting enough in your smoothie. You're getting the wild blueberries, you're getting the bananas in your smoothie, you're doing the steamed potatoes and leafy greens and you're not like giving up calories. And that's what happens. To so try that, that's one angle right there. It could be really helpful. I love that food question. Um, you know, papaya, banana, more of that in there, more of the, the celery juice, more of the lettuces, and you keep that balance while you're getting rid of that old fat storage and the fat that's been in your bloodstream for three days because it's still going to be in your bloodstream for days after you go off the fats. So you're going to be swinging. You're going to be like, what is this? So you guys, thanks for being here. Um, you know, if you found this helpful, uh, thumbs up. If you can, like if you can, subscribe, follow, whatever. Just, you know, share if you can. Please share, help others. It would be amazing if you do that. I would love you guys for that. Um, and anyway, I stand with you totally, 100%. I believe in you. I believe in your your ability to heal. Um, I got your back. You, I know so many of you have been through so much struggling. Uh, many of you have been through hell and back with your symptoms and conditions and seen a lot of doctors and gone through a lot. Just know my heart pours out to you and I believe in you. And, and tonight when you're sleeping, you let your body heal, okay? Tonight when you're sleeping, you know, right before you go to sleep, you ask the angels to come and have them by your bedside, okay? And they'll be sitting there with you. They love you. They'll stay there and they'll help you. Just you'll keep some peace around you. You do some healing you sleep, okay, and just know that, you know, that healing is a process, but you have everything in your body, everything in your soul. It's all there. We just need to do the right things, take one step at a time, do some tools, go three steps up, two steps back, keep on climbing up, keep on healing, and know that, uh, that I care greatly. I care greatly and uh, love you guys, and okay, um, and uh, yeah. So I will see you guys the next Q&A. Bless your heart.